Hey everybody, John with Owl Vans. I am standing in front of one of Owl's very own sprinters. Here you can see we've got our flare space. We call them kind of uh, flat flares. What they really do is give you an operable window on the back, but that's why this back end looks a little bit different from some of the other sprinter back ends, but rest assured, the install is gonna be the same. Today we are installing, drum roll please, the Expedition Tire Carrier. One of the things I love about this product is I think it's dead simple, it's gorgeous, it's light. Look at this. I'd have to look up what it is, but I think it's like 12 pounds or something like that, 14 pounds. Um, we add a hoop to it, and obviously with tires, it's gonna get heavier than that, but um, easy to, to uh, work with. It's a fairly simple, quick install. What we're gonna be doing is mounting to the hinges. So one of the first things you wanna do is I set this down. One of the first things you wanna do with your install is make sure that you have 180 hinges. So 180 hinges are, uh, these, what they do, what a 180 hinge, the other option is a 270. You can tell this by how much your door opens and also by the look of the hinge. A 180 has two holes in it, top and bottom. The 270 does not. Now a 180 will open, you guessed it, 180 degrees. So that's about as far as a 180 will open. If your doors open all the way and fold against the side of the vehicle, that's a 270 hinge. You're going to have to swap that out for a 180 hinge. We sell them on our website. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, the other reason we want 180 hinge is it stops the gear from hitting the side of the vehicle. This one, you can kind of see it poking out. It has a flare from flare space on it. And once you get a tire on this, you obviously don't want that door opening all the way against the side of the vehicle. So that's why uh, we require 180 hinges. So to get started, we want to make sure we have all the right parts. Your main carrier, that's a fairly obvious one. <laughs> if you're missing that, kind of hard to do the rest. This is what we call a bottom hoop or a tire hoop. And this is, you'll notice, has a tab on one side, none on the other. That is because some people like to mount boxes to their tire carriers whether or their ladder tires, and some people just wanna mount tires. And so we usually install this with these tabs facing up. That way, uh, they don't really get in the way of the tire. And should you ever want to put a box on it, you can. Now you can mount it this way. It's, uh, I don't know, it's ambidextrous, universal. I'm not sure what the right term is. Uh, and then if you wanted to, theoretically, you could strap something below it, but um, I don't know, I never have. So those are the two main parts. You're gonna get two boxes. Now for a tire carrier, they're gonna be labeled T1 and T2. The process of this whole thing is the same as a ladder tire with the exception of foot pegs. So I decided to shoot this video just so there was no kind of confusion. So when you open your boxes, you wanna look for what you've got in there. Of course, the most important things, sticker and a patch. You can't be an overlander without stickers and patches. This instruction card, which you can scan to get to this video, which if you're watching the video, very meta, kind of already there. That stuff you can set aside in here, we have a couple of things. One is an inner door panel trim removal tool. You can use this if you want. You really don't need it. You can remove the inner trim fairly easily. This is a cargo van, so you can see that the door... You can see that the door is fairly utilitarian, and this rest of this part is not covered. On most vehicles, if you have a Revel, a Storyteller, Thor, Tranquility, these types of vehicles, you'll have some paneling here that will cover all this. Additionally, you will likely have a big cutout here, which will make this installation a little bit easier. For today, we're actually gonna be drilling a hole all the way through this, but it's good because then you're gonna see how you, you uh, deal with that hole if you have this type of door. And again, getting this panel off is fairly easy and getting the big panel off is even easier because it's just held on by essentially like, like snap or pop rivets and you grab one edge and you pull off and it just pops right off. If you break any of those tabs, it's not a big deal. We actually include a few more in the kit. Um, it's not a big deal, even if you uh, are short one, the panel's not gonna fall off. So item number one is making sure you have all the stuff in your kit. We've got these parts here that we're gonna use later. These are the inner hinge brackets. And then we include a step bit. This is for widening the hole that you drill through the door. Uh, this is the actual door plate, and then you want to keep this thing below it is the template. 
So this template is gonna be important for marking our door. And don't worry, we uh, allow for a fair margin of error. So when you draw that hole or that circle and drill that hole in your van, it's actually really, really simple. And uh, we really haven't had anyone screwed up yet. Important thing about drilling the door, there are a number of folks out there, and I say this in some of my videos now, because when we started this, we we're the only ones that did rear door carriers because that's what Owl invented it. Uh, now we've got a lot of people that kind of copy what we do. And the problem is they copy a lot of it, but they don't copy the engineering of it. And obviously it sounds nicer to have a no drill option, but we've done a ton of engineering and a ton of destructive testing. And the way we mount this is by far the strongest. We put the weight on the hinges, which is a load bearing item. And then the hole through the door is in a strategically located spot to allow the strongest possible attachment. If you come around the side, yes, you're giving up drilling, but a lot of times what you end up doing is uh, cutting through weatherproofing, which is never a good idea. Weatherproofing is there to keep water out and then grinding down latches that help close the door and keep them closed. So these are all things that we didn't feel comfortable and didn't think was the ideal solution for moving forward. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have all those kits. You should have a second box that I mentioned. This is going to have your handle and your puck and these bolts here are actually going to hold on your bottom hoop. And this one here we call kind of our all thread. This is uh, gonna run all the way from the back of the carrier through to the front, and that's gonna allow you to put on your uh, tire. So this is kind of mostly stuff we're gonna use later with the exception of these hoop bolts. So you can go ahead and grab those now. And then let's talk about the tools required for this. So I'm gonna try to go over everything. I think I've got everything I need, and if we're going through and I realize we need something else, well, we'll go through that in the video. Uh, the simple items that we're gonna need, uh, a drill, that's pretty simple, a drill bit. Anything that is slightly larger than a 3 8 that's because 3 8 inch is what the diameter of the bolt is that we're gonna be using for the through bolt in the door. And a little trick for those of you that don't know, if you ever wanna see if a uh, drill bit is a proper size for a bolt, what you can do is the flat part of the shaft of, sorry, the unthreaded part of a drill bit, you can hold the bolt up to it and then just kind of close one eye and look directly on. And what you should see is that the drill bit kind of fills in and is a little bit wider than the bolt. That means that you've got a drill bit that's gonna allow that bolt to pass through without scraping off any sort of paint. Uh, oh, that's another good one. Let me grab that. We're gonna require a little bit of paint to touch up the hole that we do. Okay, so we have the drill. We got the drill bit. We got a little bit of paint. You're gonna need a ratchet, you're gonna need a 9 16th socket and a 7 seconds Allen head. You can also use an Allen, uh, you know, just like a right angle Allen as well. Um, nice to have is a torque wrench. We're gonna talk about some torques, but uh, some torque specs. But really with a lot of this stuff, because we're using stainless steel hardware that's fairly soft, the torque ratings are not gonna be uh, that high about 25 to 30 foot pounds on the, uh, the hinge mounts, but you do want to keep those tight. That is a maintenance item. We can talk more about that later. For putting on the all thread at the very end, you're going to want an open-ended adjustable wrench. You're also going to need something long and thin like this screwdriver. That's just going to go down uh, into the all thread while you tighten it. We can talk more about that later. I don't think there's anything else. Um, I don't love impact guns for what we're doing. Uh, we use them sometimes here because we do this all the time, but the reason I'm not a huge fan of impact guns, a lot of our hardware has nylocks. You don't really wanna use impacts that often with nylocks. And more importantly, impact guns make you go fast. And when you go fast, you tend to cross thread things and cross threading things sucks. So go slow and do stuff by hand. I think I've got all that going. So now we can jump right in and start the installation. So you hear that pop, there's just a little orange pop rivet. Most of the time these come right out. If they do break, we include some extras in the kit, so it's not a big deal. As I said, you slide your hand in. I always tell the joke, the first time I drilled a hole, I was nervous and sweating. Now when vans come in, the drills are spinning before the van even stops. Also, as I mentioned, we make sure that we engineer in a fair amount of margin of error for you. So this is the template. Notice, we wrote a template on it. That's how you know. 
All right, so what we're gonna do is you see the space, you see the shape of this? Basically this template is gonna end up right there. And the reason we build this this way is there's an outer sheet metal that's mainly cosmetic. Behind that is an inner structure. That structure is what we want to actually add the load to. This kind of um, step down, what it does is it ties in the outer sheet metal to the structure of the inner sheet metal. So as you drill through, you're going to go through the cosmetic sheet metal fairly quickly. Then you're going to hit the slightly thicker structural sheet metal. And then on this particular van, you're going to go all the way through with your drill bit. That's because we're going to have to widen that hole in the backside to gain access because this door doesn't have the panel cutouts. Uh, but for most of you, you're probably going to be drilling through just two layers. So what we do is we take this template and we hold it up there and we want to kind of line that up with the top ridge. Your angle on this video may be a little bit off, but basically we're lining this up on that seam so that it's kind of equidistant this shape is exactly the shape of this. So what you wanna do is hold that in. And the important thing when you're drawing this circle is, in fact, you don't even need to draw the circle, but you can, is I like to put kind of a dot dead center, which is the easiest thing for me. But if you wanna draw a circle, don't push hard because this is foam and it's gonna walk out of the way. So go very gently. And there's your circle. And looks like I missed my center a little bit. So we'll put it right there. So that's the spot where we're gonna start drilling. Pretty easy. I don't know if I mentioned Sharpie on the list. You're gonna want a Sharpie or some sort of pen. So let's get our drill bit going. Yes, and you're gonna to wanna, to, if you have a door like this, you're gonna want a little bit of stick out on that drill bit because it's gonna to have to go all the way through. And you don't have to put a ton of force into the door. The sheet metal is fairly thin. Just kind of put a little bit of light pressure and let the drill bit do the work. All right, there we go. I'm through all through through all three layers. Bit of a tongue twister. See, you can see I came all the way through here. And the cool thing is, now again, if you have the cutout here, you do not need to drill through your door. That's important. Do not drill all the way through if you have the cutout. Because the only purpose for the cutout is so we can access that bolt or access the nut on the back side of that bolt. If you have the cutout, don't drill through because you have a giant cutout right here, you can very easily access that. This is a little cap that will eventually go in there. See, it blends quite nicely, you won't notice it. You will not need this cap. If you have one of these openings and a panel that covers all this, you can just throw this cap away. The other thing, and this is just a quick tip, the other thing is, see how we now have a little bit of metal shavings here? Uh, it's really good to get a vacuum. We don't like metal shavings. A lot of these uh, van builders will cut and drill stuff really quickly and just leave the metal shavings inside the van. Those are a, um, kind of a, a, a seed for rust. So you wanna get all that stuff out. So whether it's a vacuum, a shop vac, or some compressed air or a leaf blower, blow that stuff out of your van. You don't want that stuff, don't blow it into your van, <laughs> blow it out of your van. All right, now we're gonna do what's called widening this hole. Going back to your kit, you're gonna grab this. It's called the step bit. And we, are, we need to make this hole wide enough to accommodate that. So just by holding this up, you can see that we're probably gonna to go to about the 7 8 mark this step bit is labeled. So we're gonna to go to seven eighths and then we're gonna test fit it. And if it fits, then we're gonna paint it. See how I have just a hint of circle left? But what I did is I took this plate and just test fit it. And it fits. 
which means we don't need to go any bigger. That's the easiest thing, uh, easiest way to tell if your hole is the proper size. Now you don't wanna go super big. There's no reason to do that. Now granted, the 3M tape is gonna seal all around the opening, so you're not gonna get water intrusion, but there's no reason to drill a larger hole if you don't need it. Now the important thing, and I joke about being able to wait in my other videos, is to put some paint on this. And real simply, there are a couple ways to put the paint on some better than others. One of the ones that I actually particularly like, and be careful you don't cut your finger because there are some sharp pieces of metal here, but what I tend to like is, first of all, shake up your spray paint. I'm using a Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer, one of my favorites. And then what I do is I get a rubber glove and I spray my finger. Don't spray towards the van, spray away from it. Get your finger nice and coated, and then just go around and get all that metal. Okay, and then what you wanna do is get in there and spray the actual inner hole. There's a tiny little hole in there that goes through the cosmetic sheet metal, and you wanna make sure you get that. Let me wipe some paint off of my hand. And then eventually we're gonna paint the backside too, but we'll do that later when we install that cap. <laughs> Now's the hardest thing. Wait, wait till it dries. Now we're not actually drilling uh, or, or putting anything that's gonna be scraping on this, but at least when it comes to Rust-Oleum, wait a few minutes and make sure that it's dry so that we're not gonna rub it off. Uh, if you're using an automotive paint, you may have to wait longer. So then what I've done, now I did this before the video started which I shouldn't have done. I should have showed you people. But I just took a little bit of, um, really water will do it, and made sure I clean this well so that we have a good uh, clean adhesion for this. I actually used alcohol, and alcohol is a good one. You don't want to use a brake clean or a salt, hard solvent like that because it can damage your paint. But, uh, you know, rubbing alcohol is, is something good that will work. And then what you want to do is you want to take the 3M backing off easiest thing with this stuff is if you have an exacto blade or a sharp tool you can kind of get in there and just get this plastic part off or plastic cover then it's kind of an eyeball you're gonna i put that slug in first and then kind of make sure that it's pretty even and then kind of press it against the van and again you don't want to press super hard because you can the outside sheet metal is prone to denting not really bad i mean i'm pushing pretty hard but the inside is what carries the load. And this is really just spreading things out on that sheet metal. Main carrier load is gonna be um, hitting that inner structure. And in reality, the way we designed the carrier, the vast majority of the load is on the hinges, which makes a huge difference. All right, so we got that nice and tight and we're just gonna leave that alone. And now it's time to start putting the carrier together. And then we're gonna be able to mount it onto the vehicle. So earlier I showed you about these bolts. These are a 19 millimeter. I don't know if I mentioned that socket earlier. You're gonna want a 19 mil socket. And it's your decision as to whether you want those box tabs up or down. I'm putting them up. So what we're gonna do is you see these holes on the bottom of this carrier. You're just, this is gonna cover those. And then you're just gonna insert the bolts. It's kind of hard to hold it in the air and do it at the same time. So I'm gonna set it here. And then I'm gonna to start to thread this bolt through. And again, you don't wanna cross thread. So just kind of get it loose in there. Don't tighten one side down. I always say with everything you do, get the bolts started before you tighten any of them down. And then once you get both bolts started, you kind of want to just ping pong back and forth as you tighten them. You want to make sure you're not cross-threaded. And with these, you kind of want to make them as tight 
as you can make them by hand. You don't want to gun these things in at 130 pounds like with your impact, but with a simple ratchet, you just want to get them nice and tight. You really want that hoop against the carrier. So ba basically my, uh, as they say, guten tight, the German torque rating. He's getting those nice and tight. The good thing is he can't really back out. This is against your van. It's actually, it's not touching your van, but it's very close to it. And right behind this is the plastic of the license plate trim. So these can't really back out anyway. So now you've got that in. The next thing we want to worry about is mounting this thing to the hinges. So I'll set this down. And in this box that the template was in, you'll see these two things. Isn't it kind of cute? It's like little owl eyes. Always branding. And then you got this plate too. The way this plate works, those holes are slightly off center in both directions. It goes, so the corner that it's closest to, this one, goes towards the tail light and towards the top of the van. You kind of see that, I can just look at the hinge how the inner hinge, how this kind of lines up with those holes there. Whereas if you have it upside down, you can kind of get it to fit, but it doesn't fit well. You want to make sure it goes this direction. So this is the part of the video where if you're a likable person and you have friends, friends help because they can hold the carrier for you. Now, if you're like me and you're out here and everybody's working, you got to do it solo. You do what you have to do. I have no friends with me, so I'm going to prove that you can do this solo. You're going to take your A1 bag, it's going to have four of these three eighths by one and a quarter. It's gonna have washers and nylock nuts. Now an important thing, this is a maintenance item. Once you get this side on, you can also put on, I like to put on a little bit of red Loctite. Even though they're nylocks, these are off-road vehicles. They take a lot of pounding, a lot of shaking. It's always good to put a little uh, red Loctite on these because you, know, you want those to stay tight and that's gonna allow you um, to not have as many issues with maintenance. So the way this works, again, you orient the plate properly. The bolts go from the inside out. I usually like to do one and one. So get one on top and one on the bottom. And usually what I do to start it, normally you're gonna put the washer on first, then the nut. But to just get it started and held in place, I typically put the nut to start uh, and put the washer on last. I go, I get the other ones on with the washer and I take the first one I did it off that has just the nut. So uh, now I've got that bottom plate in and then the same thing with this upper one. There's only one way that it really works. So you can see, oh, we got cobwebs. Um, you can only see, or you can see that it only kind of really fits one direction, like the band. I have a daughter. I can't say I'm a huge One Direction fan. Maybe a closet One Direction fan. So you get this on there and I like to put a bolt in the top sticking out and I've done the same on the bottom. So now what I do, I get two nuts with no washers and I'm going to try to get this carrier on And And, and what I'm going to do as well is I kind of use the carrier's weight to hold the bolt in place. I'll show you what I mean. So you're gonna get that bottom one in. And once that's in, just kind of rest the carrier on that bolt slightly. And then you can get your hand behind here to hold this and get it on there. Now I'm letting the carrier kind of hang on those, but I'm supporting it with my leg a little bit. And then, like I said, I'm just gonna get this nut on there to hold this from falling off the vehicle. And I'm gonna do the same on the bottom. Okay, so I've got those two nuts on, they're very loose. Now I'm gonna go put the other bolts through. So now I've got the other bolts through and once I get the other bolts through, I now grab the other four washers and two nuts and I'm gonna hold this, lift the carrier slightly to make sure the bolts are there. Now that I have everything kind of held in place, I'm gonna do washer and nut on the bottom and again, keeping it loose. And then I'm gonna take that top nut off. So see what I did? I put the washer on there now, I'm gonna put this washer on this top one. 
and put the nut on it as well. Now we don't want to tighten these down yet because we still got the third mounting hole. And as I said, we want to get all bolts started and in their proper location before we start tightening anything down. So I've just got these, what I did is I tightened them down to where the nylock starts to engage. And then beyond that, you're gonna need a tool. And I'm also leaving a little bit of room. I'm gonna come back and put a dab of red Loctite on those before I tighten them up. But the status we are in right now is we have all four of the hinge bolts on, but not tight. We have the bottom hoop on, and here's what I was talking about as far as those bolts. And this is touching just because we don't have the third mount in, but it actually sits slightly off that plastic. And that's what stops those from coming out. And here is why you don't want to tighten those down yet because we need to actually get that in the proper location. There, now the holes are lining up before we tighten it down because there is a little bit of movement. As I mentioned, we purposely add a little bit of movement in this so that your hole, if it's ever so slightly off, you know, an eighth of an inch this way, that way, you can still make the carrier work. It's one of the reasons that we pill this third mounting point. Now we gotta do the third mounting point. And there's a couple of parts that we wanna get right for that. First of all, you've got this little bag where that extra little plastic cover comes in handy. You've also got this bushing. This is actually gonna go in between this and this, and it's gonna actually take, oh, you can't see. This bushing is going to go in between the carrier and this, it's gonna add a little bit of dampening when you slam the door. Now this is important. Most, not most, owl carriers need no additional structure on the inside of the door. What happens is other manufacturers don't go through the engineering testing that we do and they transmit way too much force into this third mounting point. And what happens is over the years, stuff cracks. And this is why I tell people, go with the company that has been doing this for a while, because someone else can look at what we've done and copy it, but they haven't done the destructive testing. And so they don't know where the gotchas are down the line. So everything can be great. And then a couple of years from now, a year from now, your door will actually split. And the great thing about owl carriers is that doesn't happen with owl carriers. And that's because of how we design them. This fin actually has a little bit of flex in it. And then this bushing that fell also soaks up some of that. And then we also, by keeping those hinge bolts really tight, keep load from transferring into that third mounting point. So before we can start doing that, we gotta widen up this hole that we talked about earlier. And that is because with this type of door, we are going to have to get access with a socket. And so we're gonna grab our drill with that same step bit on it. And then I want to grab a deep 9 sixteenths. So here's what I like to use. It's a deep 9 sixteenths and an extension. So now you can see this doesn't fit in there. And so what I'm gonna do now is I've got my calipers out and this hole that we want to make is roughly one inch. So we want to make a one inch hole for this to fit properly. So now we come back to our step bit and you see there's one inch, right? Slightly below that one inch marker. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Sharpie and you see the one inch is there. I'm going to color below the one inch all the way around because that's the no-go. So we go up to that point, but not we don't bury the colored part of the step bit. It's just a little trick to know when to stop. But if you want to, you can also, if you have calipers I'm imagining you don't, you can kind of drill the different steps and check it as you go. And again, you don't want to push super hard here because you'll dent your door. You want to let the step bit do the work. All right, so that is fitting perfectly. I went, notice I went right up to that colored mark, but if I had buried the colored mark into the steel, it would have taken it off. So we got the right size there. Now we're gonna go back to our trusty rattle can and we're gonna put a little bit of paint on that. So 
So as you let that dry, hopefully you can see some daylight all the way through there. So what we're gonna do now, which box is it? Okay, it's back in this box. Right next to your step bit is this longer 3 eighths. All right, we're gonna get a little tricky here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this with the washer and this bushing. Now some carriers, we had blue bushings for a while, we moved to black. So it doesn't matter which one you have, they both work. I'm a sucker for blue, if you can't tell, everything we do is blue. So we're going bolt, washer, carrier, bushing, manual, and this again, we left it loose. Lift it up, get that all the way through there, like that. So this is what it should look like if you've done it properly. Which, because you've been listening to me, I know you have. And if you want, this is something I do because I'm OCD. This is where it comes out of the mold, that little spot there. Spin the bushing such that you don't see that. There we go. Look how much prettier that is. That's, that's my anal retentiveness kicking in. All right, so we got that. Now, here's why we drilled that hole. Because you've got to be able to get a socket in there. You can reach in and touch it. Be careful for the sharp metal, but you can reach in and touch it. There's that bolt right in there, okay? And hopefully, and again, you can change the angle of that bolt by lifting the carrier. What I mean by that is if that bolt, that bolt, because the carrier's weight is on it, is kind of headed like this. So if you lift this, it'll make that bolt flatter, which will line up with that hole. So just keep that in mind. While I'm doing this on the backside, I might be lifting that. Now, here's what we got to do. We have got to get this nut onto that bolt. How... How, John, how are we gonna do that? The way I like to do it is first, if you don't drop it, if you're comfortable with it, now you don't really have to have the washer. I like to live my life risky. So I'm gonna get that washer on there. I'm also very good with this kind of stuff because I do it all the time. So what I'm doing, is, oh, you didn't hear that. Edit that out, I dropped it. Now I get to pull this panel off. This is why if you have this type of door, don't try for the washer. All right, that washer's not rattling. Should I leave it? Eh, no. When the video's done, I'll take this off and pull that washer out. Now we're gonna do, here's the problem. You want a longer thing so you can get onto that bolt, but you also don't want the nut to fall down in here. So you can take anything really. I'm wadding up the bag this came in and I'm stuffing it down in here. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, after I stuff it down in there, is I put the, the uh, nut on there. Then, here's the most important part. I take a little piece of that blue painter's tape, you can do it with duct tape or whatever, and I just, not the part that's gonna go on the bolt, off to the edge of the threads, and I tape it to this, see? No fallout. That, once we get it on the bolt, will pull right off and just stay there and don't worry about it. So now the important thing is we don't cross thread it. So I do this by hand, lift up on the carrier and just rotate lightly. And it is on. So basically what I did, it's a little bit of a feel thing. Again, and this is the hardest door. With most of them, you have this opening, it's a no-brainer. You put the nut on, it's that easy. But with this one, you saw what I did with that. So I, I, I put this on the bolt and I just got it there and I held the, the carrier flat and I just, I spun it backwards a little bit and you hear a click. And if you don't hear the click, you can kind of get a feel for it, but you turn very gently. You want that you don't put much forward pressure on it. You turn very gently because you want those threads to engage. You don't want to cross thread it. And the important thing not cross threading it is making sure you hold the backside of it fairly level. Now that nut is on there, we can tighten this. And this is important. This third mounting point is not supposed to be super tight. And in fact, we're going to go ahead and tighten this last. So right now we're going to tighten the hinge bolts and get them to about 30 foot pounds. And then we're going to come back and tighten this part. What I like to do when I tighten these is I just reach in the gap here of the door and get the Allen inside. Oh, 
No, I forgot. Red Loctite. Let's Red Loctite it. So again, we're going to do about 30 foot pounds, which is kind of what I would call pretty snug with your hands. But uh, if you want to use a torque wrench, you can. The important thing is that these stay tight. You don't want these to get loose. In fact, a good little tip for anything automotive is to get a little paint pen. And what you do is you put a mark across the bolt and across the carrier, a small little mark. And what it's going to do is it's going to stop. You can tell then, move this chain out of the way. You can tell then, you can tell then if the bolt's backed out at all or loosened, if you will. And the reason you want these bolts tight is they actually hold the carrier off the door. You don't want to put a ton of pressure back into the door. And as you tighten them, you want to go back and tighten the other ones because it's a pair of bolts. So as you tighten one, it can loosen up the other one a little bit. So once you get all your first bolts tightened, you want to go back and check them all. And once you're done, make sure they're all pretty snug. All right, happy there. Now we're gonna go tighten this third member. As you tighten this, you wanna make sure that this bushing gets very lightly compressed, not much. I'm talking just like snug it down. All right, I need my extension. So you watch that bushing. I'll give you a gap here. Okay. You don't want to over tighten that bushing. That bushing is there for padding. If you compress it, it's not padding anymore. So it's still, you compress it, it's still squishy to the touch. There's no slop, but it's also not bulging. And for a rough calculation, what is my measurement on this? I am 0.6 between those. 0.6155, so that's basically the gap you want. A lot tighter than that, you can run into issues with it being over tight. So that's done. And effectively, even though we went through this in pretty deep detail, you've essentially got the carrier on there and you can feel how rock solid that is already. You see the whole van shaking? Look at that, I love that. Nice and light, aluminum, it's gonna give you uh, a lighter door opening when you use the carrier. So now what we're gonna do is put the center channel in and then we're gonna plug this hole for those that have it. So if you have this hole, what you can do now is take this little cap, voila, that pops right into that one inch hole, looks factory. Then we're gonna get the last two items are this. Now I, we, the last items are these. You got your handle, you've got what we call our cone washer and an all thread. This van doesn't have uh, upgraded wheels and tires yet. We just got the van, we're gonna do it over time, but I'm gonna grab an arsenal off of another vehicle so you can see how to do the tire carrier or how to mount your tire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this all thread I'm gonna spin this nut off. And then you've got two washers and a locking nut. You take everything off except for a single washer. Kind of hold it vertically so it fits. And then we just kind of slot it in the back and then it will boot forward. Then what we're gonna do is we do washer and then locking nut and then nut. And then you're gonna spin this all the way down. This is a little bit time consuming so I'll definitely speed this up and if you need to, if this wants to spin on you, that's what this is for. You stick that in that hole, you get it past the hole, and that hole's for a padlock, and then you can stick this tool in the hole and then spin this down and keep that uh, all thread from rotating. Okay, so now what you wanna do 
you don't want to tighten that down. You want this a little bit mobile. And the reason is you got to see what the proper height is based on your wheel tire combination. So now I'm going to show you that. I've got an arsenal here. So the way I like to do this is pick the, the tire up and I set the base in and I rock it up. And if it's not in the right spot, then you just take the tire down. All right, so I put on that bottom hoop. I start to put it up. Pretty close. Now what you can do, you don't have to take the tire off as long as we get it in that hole. You can lean the tire forward a little bit. And what I like to do is don't try to move it up, twist it. If you twist it, it'll rise and fall. So that's about right. You put the tire back on, that's about dead center. So now what we wanna do is take the tire off. Again, so that you don't hit that, you just lean it forward, set the tire on the ground again. Screwdriver or my flathead, and I'll actually make a little mark in case it moves. I'll make a little mark in the powder coat. See, I did just a little tick mark. It's probably impossible to see. I did just a little scratch. Again, these carriers are aluminum. They're not gonna corrode. So I put a little scratch dead center where the height of my wheel is. That way, if, as I'm tying it, if it moves up or down, I'll know it. Again, stick the wrench through there and we can twist it if you want the padlock to sit flat. Again, I'm right on that same spot and I'm gonna tighten this. That way I can see if that moved at all. And again, this doesn't need to be crazy tight. You just need to stop it from moving because you've got the washer in back and the tire wing nut on the end is gonna hold everything together. So all this is doing, this bolt, so I don't need to get it very tight. All it's doing is holding this from sagging. It's not really going to be much of an issue. You do want it snug though. It's got a lock washer on it because you don't want that You don't want this to get loose in the sense that as you're driving, it goes up and down. But as long as you tighten that wing nut enough, it's going to put enough tension on the whole system. So now we put the wheel and tire back on. And then when it comes to this stuff, this cone washer, the cone goes into the tire. I know it sounds silly that I'm mentioning that, but you'd be surprised. And then this, and you just wanna, again, you don't wanna cross thread things. Now, if you want, you can put a little anti-seize on this if you have it. It's not going to seize because even though the stuff, even though the stuff is uh, stainless, um, it's coated and when you coat stainless, it doesn't gall. But I like to put some on just cause it's a little bit easier to get the handle on. If you don't have anti-seize, it's not a big deal. But the thing with anti-seize is, a little goes a long way. You get anti-seize on anything and you can't get it off. All right, so I got this started now. Now it's just a matter of screwing this on. Hey everybody, I wanna interrupt these videos for a quick safety update that I didn't have in the original video. Um, this is your all thread on the tire carrier, ladder tire, expedition, etc. Your handle, whether you have a regular standard handle or an expedition handle, it must be threaded all the way past this hole. Obviously, on this side of the hole is not very strong. So if your handle's here with a roto pack or with an expedition um, uh, handle with roto packs and so on, it's gonna be too much weight for these thin pieces of metal. Your handle must be screwed on, whether you have an expedition handle or the standard handle, it must be screwed on past past the locking hole or the hole for a padlock, you can see there, it must be on the, the strong side. That way your tire is being held on by the strong side of the bolt. We saw a couple of carriers where people had, uh, you know, really wide tires, etc., and they had screwed it on just to this tip part and that made me very nervous. So uh, if you have too much tire or a 3500 or something like that, and you want, and you are just grabbing the end of this all thread, please reach out to our customer service staff. We have longer all threads for you absolutely unequivocally do not drive around with a tire where your handle is just grabbing the very end of those threads it's not safe uh, we want to keep you and everyone else on the road with you safe thanks so you want this fairly snug so once you start to get resistance you want to make sure your tire is kind of centered once you start to get resistance i want you to go a few turns past resistance and make it really snug there we go and please i beg of you make the logo flat it drives me nuts. I see people driving down the road like that. Don't do that. Make the logo flat for Pete's sake. 
It's not hard. It takes two seconds. Make it flat. You've got this hole here. That's where the pad uh, padlock goes. Now, here's the point where I rack my brain and I go, what am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? So we're going to go back through the boxes. Boxes are all empty. We go through and check one more time. All the hinge bolts are tight. Again, that's a maintenance item. Every few months or after every few off-road excursions, you want to check those, make sure they're tight. We've got this tightened, we've got it painted. We've got the inner cap on. We've got the center all thread on. We've got the handle on and level. We've got the cone washer on. You can see where these tabs are. They're totally out of the way. And you can see how nicely this door still moves quite nicely. Other thing I'll say is it's not gonna hurt the door per se, but your door now has, you know, probably an 80 or 90 pound tire on it in addition to the carrier. So we don't go, bye guys, and throw the door shut like you would an empty door. I call it closing purposely. So you go to close the door, just put your hand behind it. Let it close like that. You just wanna be kind to your stuff. You don't wanna take it and just do this. You can, but just be kind to your stuff. Look how good that looks. All right, we're gonna close this door so you can get the full experience of what that looks like. So we had the before, and now we have the after. I think it looks great. So everybody, thank you for spending time with us today. That is the Owl Expedition Ladder Tire Carrier. It's an all aluminum tire carrier. As far as I know, the only all aluminum tire carrier in the industry. If you have questions with your install, we have customer service who answer the phones. Uh, something we take a lot of pride in and they get back to emails quickly. That's uh, support at Owl Vans. You can go to our website and get our phone number and give us a ring. Uh, if you like these videos, we've got tons more videos about everything from stuff we make to stuff we don't make to uh, general uh, information on vans. If you like it, subscribe to the channel. We put videos out all the time. Again, thank you for your purchase. Thanks for walking through this with me today, and I hope you have some safe travels. <laughs>